Tonight, in the fat fatherland, where obesity is rife and ruthless. But there's a bit of a mess down there. Yeah. And you've got a toe missing. Dr Christian pleads with the people of America's fattest city. It is not too late to make changes that will have a significant impact on your health, so try it. Back home, the last super size versus the last super skinny. Brooke, you're going to get paired up with Marie. And after, super size visits America for a taste of her future. It's pretty shocking, isn't it? The extreme eaters check into Dr Christian's feeding clinic. I wouldn't rely on luck when it comes to health. For a two-day dose of each other's dire diet. It just doesn't seem to make sense to me to eat something that you know is not really healthy. I think if I was in your position, I'd think I would try a little harder. Plus, we see how, with sheer determination, real recovery is possible when you're battling an eating disorder. Because it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. Over the past 30 years, obesity rates have shockingly trebled in the UK, with almost half of all men and a third of all women overweight. And Dr Christian wants us to change our ways before it's too late. So for the past seven weeks, he's seen firsthand the horrors of obesity in America's fattest city, Evansville. The heaviest patient I've lifted is 765 pounds. Wow, well over 50 stone then. Here, 38% of residents are clinically obese. Just to move one patient, you need two vehicles and you need four paramedics. With us not far behind, Dr Christian wants us to realise Evansville is our future, should we keep piling on the pounds. We've had large caskets for as young as 11 years old. I'm really distressed. At the Deaconess Hospital, Dr Christian's witnessed how fat can be fatal. This is not Hollywood, but he... You're dead, and you're dead. He's seen and heard it all. I got out of the tub, and all of a sudden, I heard this crunch. Well, it's the end of my time here in Evansville, and there clearly is a problem. But there are small little pockets of hope with people fighting for change. And thankfully, they really seem to be working wonders. Dr. Christian's seen how groups like the Pirouette Project... And go up and back, the very top of your back. And the Body Gospel... Come on! get people moving and get results. I want to be healthier and they don't judge you for being overweight and they're with you every step of the way. And how driving individuals... My name is Faith and I'm the nutrition counselor here in Evansville. ...never give up. I don't want to do any of it, sorry. Health isn't important. No, it is. I just want nothing to do with it. But not here. Dr Christian's visit to Evansville has made the local press. And now, on his last day, he's been invited to relay his anti-fat message on the local radio, teaming up once more with nutrition counsellor Faith Diamond. Okay, five seconds. It's time to hit the airwaves for one final push to persuade the people of Evansville to get fit and eat less. So you've been filming in Evansville. What have you seen? What has really jumped out at me is hidden calories, calories that you don't think about. You can order a nice salad. You then slather it in sauces and dressings and stuff. You could cut out five, six, seven, eight hundred calories a day just by changing the nature of the dressings and sauces that you use. The best diet to go on is a diet that you don't know you're on change the drink you're drinking, change the sauce you add on your food, mm -hmm. you've probably done enough that over time it make a up. difference. You can start today making healthy changes if you want to. So any parting words for Evansville? First of all, thank you to Evansville for being so accommodating and, and so understanding about this really quite sensitive issue. And also that it is not too late to make changes and you can make very, very small changes that will have a significant impact on your health, so try it. Dr Christian's time here is up. But two months after his visit, a new Gallup poll revealed that incredibly, in one year, Evansville's obesity rate has dropped from 38 to 27 per cent. It seems the hard work of those in the community has paid off. Now the fattest city in the States is McAllen in Texas, with 39 per cent of its population chronically overweight. It's clear, despite the good news for Evansville, 
that obesity is a growing problem, not just in the US, but in the UK too. Which is why Dr. Christian's been fighting a war on weight back home, except he's been tackling both ends of the scale. Dreadful diets destroying their health, it's been eight super size versus eight super skinny. And tonight, last but not least, the final two extreme eaters swap diets to conquer their fatal feeding habits. Brooke, come forward. You're going to get paired up with Marie. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're tiny. I think you're like half, at least half of me. Yeah. It was quite shocking to see like the two extremes, really. But she's lovely, and I think it's a good match. I mean, I feel like quite well, so I think you'll be okay. Maybe quantities aren't so good. I know she's big, but from her description of what she ate, it didn't sound like she ate absolutely tons. So it'll be interesting to find out. Brooke and Marie are both bright and well-educated. When it comes to food, these two haven't got a clue. I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will teach them that they need a lot more balance when it comes to healthy eating. 20-year-old medical student Brooke Gamble has one love in her life, and it isn't lectures. Pretty much everything I eat contains some sort of cheese. Cheese toasty, a cheese sandwich, cheesy pasta. I, I just really like cheese. But it doesn't really like Brooke. And this cheese chomper tops the scales at a weighty 24 stone 8 pounds. Brooke enjoys her fromage fix for 11sies, lunch and dinner. I love making a big lasagna because it's really cheesy and there's always enough for seconds and even thirds. I think Brooke's the size she is um, because she has quite large portions. I think I'm going to have some seconds. Does anybody else want some? Oh, oh no, I don't think I can. Okay. I've eaten so much. <laughs> the trouble is, I would always go back for seconds, and then after that, um, I'd have pudding as well. So I eat a lot more than I probably should compared with other people. Oh, that was delicious. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, but wannabe GP Brooks not swallowing the medical mantra. Why should a patient listen to you about diet advice when I'm this size? If she tried to tell someone else to lose weight and tried to give them advice, I don't think they'd take it too well. My arms are quite big um, in general. I mean, I've got bingo wings. <laughs> um, but everything's really big, so just needs to get smaller. <laughs> I know that I eat too much and I know that I don't exercise enough, but I've never actually sat down and, and counted what I've eaten in a day, so I wouldn't really have a clue as to how much I'm eating. Polar opposite super skinny Marie Chirat knows exactly how much she's eating to the nut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One of my typical breakfast recipes would be porridge made with almonds, which I grind at home, and it would be 27 almonds. Now, I don't know how I came to 27, but there we are. Health-conscious Marie may gauge her gruel to the nearest gram, but at just seven stone two pounds, she's under-measuring by a mile. I do feel that I'm underweight. I do feel that I look quite bony. Marie doesn't dislike Nosh. Mm, that's lovely. Far from it. She's a super fan of superfoods. Typically, I try to eat whole foods, so brown rice, lentils, quinoa. Um, I try to eat nuts and seeds, tofu. So I do eat very well. I think I'm very lucky, but I'm going wrong somewhere. It's not what Marie's eating, it's how much. I would always endeavour to have three meals a day, but there are occasions when I would have to miss breakfast or miss lunch. Okay. Not even all of dinner... Do you want to say, Grace? ..gets digested. Sometimes when we're, we're having our evening meal, she'll have, um, besides her own plate, she'll have what you might call an overflow bowl, and um, if it's a bit much, then things move from the plate to the overflow bowl. Can I temperature it a little bit that I don't think I should eat? Yes, go on, that'll be lovely, thank you. 
Sometimes she will try to encourage me to watch what I eat, certainly. I'm a bit of a cheeseaholic. Some cheese is good, but you don't want cheese every day. Too much cheese is not necessary. The sort of food I would feel uncomfortable about eating and, and reluctant to eat would be the things such as um, highly processed meat, white bread type things. But Marie's superfood diet leaves her feeling far from OK. Even gentle exercise takes it out of her. I find that I feel a bit jittery and I do get very tired. And health food fanatic Marie's frustrated she's not been able to help herself. You know, it's ridiculous. I've got all the information I need. You know, I'm an intelligent woman. I should be able to do it, so I'm determined to do it now. More than 17 stone between them, these two ladies are battling diet demons at opposite ends of the scale. But before Super Skinny takes on Super Size in the feeding clinic, Dr. Christian's sending young Brooks stateside for a taste of what's to come should she not beat the bulge. <coughs> I'm Christina White. I'm 48 years old and I'm uh, 32 stone. Coming up, Super Size Brooke gets scared by what she sees in the States. I want to live for as long as possible. Yeah. On the diet swap, super skinny Marie gets critical. I mean, would you always go for white bread? Because I tend to avoid white bread like the plague. And thanks to Dr Christian, cheese finally gives Brooke nightmares. Total saturated fat that you're eating. Oh, that's horrible. Weighing in at the feeding clinic this week is super skinny superfood supporter Marie Sherat versus supersized cheese cheerleader Brooke Gamble. These two extreme eaters will face their food fears by swapping diets. But before they do, Dr. Christians prescribed Brooke a supersized wake up call in America. To meet 32 stone Christina White. Life's scary. My kidney doctor told me by the age of 54, I could be dead. And I'm 48 now. Dr. Tabee Brooke has been sent to Christina in Ohio for a large dose of her future, should she not lose weight. Hi. Hi. My name's Brooke. Hi, Brooke. How are Hi. you? Good, thank you. And to make sure Brooke takes every drop of her American medicine, Dr. Christian's also en route to surprise her. Brooke is a medical student. So really the bottom line on this one is she really ought to know better. I hope it's going to be a real eye-opener for Brooke to see the reality of what obesity can do. Room-bound Christina relies on her daughter Katrina for pretty much everything. I've been caring for my mom since I was at least 16, so about a good five, six years. When doctors tell her she needs to lose weight or she's going to die. That bothers me. It'd just be little old me. <sighs> Today, Christina wants Brooke to see the brutality of obesity and take on the duties usually done by her daughter. I was wondering if you can empty my port a pot. Yeah, sure. Going to the toilet downstairs in a commode should be something you're doing when you're 70, 80 years old. But emptying her commode is just the start. Another of her daughter's daily duties is to dress an open wound in her mum's stomach. You tell me if it hurts, all right? Oh, it ain't gonna hurt. Due to her obesity, in 2008, Christina had gallbladder surgery, but there were complications. They told me that I had gangrenous abdominal area from the gallbladder. It took six months and seven operations to clear out the infection, but the wound still hasn't healed. You all right? <laughs> yep, this is what I gotta put up with. Christina's been given just six years to live. Although riddled with diabetes, asthma, kidney and cholesterol problems, nothing's enough to stop her bad habits. The doctor keeps telling me to lose weight and stop smoking. And it's easier said than done on both. But that 40-a-day habit doesn't suppress her appetite. So what's your one weakness um, for food? You know, the lunch meats yeah. and the cheeses and 
all the bad stuff for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got to have some fattening stuff on it for it <laughs> right. to taste good, I yeah. guess. So. Is there anything that you used to do that you can't do now because of your weight? Now I have to depend on a lot of people. Yeah. And, and that, that's hard. Without help, Christina can't even leave the house. When was the last time you came out? Oh, I think it's been about a month. Really? Yeah. But she's leading Brooke to a surprise visitor. Well, hey, I'm glad I could glad I could be of help, you know. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Christine? I'm Christian. How are you Hi, doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? How far away do you live? Um Are you just down the road? Yes. Can we walk and sort of talk at the same time? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I say walk. You can roll and we'll walk. <laughs> there you that go. Right? That sounds yeah. better. Dr. Christian's keen to see just how bad Christina's health problems are, starting with that open wound. It is pretty hidden by your tummy anyway, isn't yes. it? That's the problem. It's not getting in a lot of air because my belly hangs over it. It's pretty shocking. Yes, it isn't is. Isn't it? They do heal. They gradually, gradually sort of seal themselves up. Right. Takes a long time. If you're a smoker and you're overweight and you're yeah. diametic, <laughs> then you can times that time by tenfold. Christina ticks all those boxes and more. How bad is your asthma? Right now, it's bad because I have a, a sinus infection going on. What else makes asthma worse? Smoking. And weight. People who are big can have much worse asthma, and if they lose the weight, they sometimes find the asthma goes all together. Oh, okay. What's this for? This, this is for bladder? Yes. So you were having continence problems, were yes. you? Yes. Okay. I mean, without those pills, I can get up out of the bed or off this chair, and then it's coming down. And again, what's a very common cause of you being overweight? Being overweight. <laughs> are you getting the message yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah? I'm getting through. Yeah. <laughs> to see what's causing Christina's obesity, Dr. Christian explores the kitchen. I'll tell you what there is a lot of. My God, here, you've got boxes and boxes and boxes of sodas, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, this is an absolute disaster for diabetics. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the worst possible thing you could be drinking. It's just sugar water, essentially. I just, I have a problem with the diet taste. If we assume there's about 150 calories or so per can, Actually, more, 170 calories. How many cans would you have a day? Up to six. <gasps> OK, so that's about 1,000 calories straight away. Mm -hmm. If you just change that to water or to squash, you would lose weight. That sounds quite easy, doesn't it? Yeah. But the only person who can lose the weight is Christina. You've got to want to change, is what it boils down it's, to. Yeah, that's You've got to want to do it. Is. And if you don't want to do it, it's, it's not going to happen, is it? No, it's not. Do you want to? That's a no. Right now, that no. That sigh was a no, wasn't it? Right now, no, because I'm up in the my age group and, and I've got all this wrong with me. I just don't, you know, I, I don't care anymore. So what's going to happen? I'm ready to go any time. You know, I'm happy with it. I, I want to be happy and die. Me smoking and drinking my pop, I'm happy. No. What do you think of that, bro? Um, Are you shocked by that? Yeah, it, it kind of upsets me. Um, I want to live as long as possible. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't... I don't want to have health problems that make my mindset happy to go. I want to... I want to live as long as possible. Brooke is a medical student, and I think because of that, she's seen lots of gory pictures of all sorts of funny medical conditions. But I don't think she's ever met a real person in their home with all these sorts of problems. And to have someone sit in front of you and say, I don't want to live anymore, really shocked her. But has it shocked Brooke enough into changing her ways? Do you feel now you've kind of got the motivation, so when we meet back in London again... Definitely. ..you're going <laughs> to give it everything? Yeah. I can advise, I can kick you up the bum when I need to kick you yeah. up the bum and all the rest of it. But you're the one who buys your food, you're the one that eats your food, yeah. and you're the one that's got to say no to yourself. I'm definitely at the point now where I need to do it, I know I need to do it, and I want to do it. Good job too, because back in the UK, the feeding clinic is ready and waiting for super size and super skinny. By swapping diets, Dr Christian's hoping these two extreme eaters 
will see the faults in their food habits and find a healthy middle ground. The two-day diet swap starts here. At five foot nine, whole food follower Marie weighs just seven stone two pounds and is three stone under her ideal weight. She may think her diet uber healthy, but Marie's food diaries reveal she's lacking vital nutrients like protein and calcium. Looking at your dietary analysis, you're really eating around 800 calories less than your body requires to maintain your weight. Oh, right. Um, that's a huge amount. Right. Did you know that? I didn't. But definitely quantity is the biggest problem. And I suspect you probably haven't had periods for a while, have you? No, no, that's right. Almost certainly due to your weight. Not having your normal hormonal cycle means your bones will be a real significant risk of osteoporosis, mm. so fractures when you're older and yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, I was told this once, and I did have a test, and of touch wood, I was lucky that the scan was fine at that time. But How long ago was that? About 15 years ago. It was a long time ago. Things right. change, and yeah. I wouldn't rely on luck when it comes to no. health. At five foot six, Cheeseaholic Brooke weighs a mighty 24 stone eight pounds. Only 20 years old and 13 stone overweight, Brooke's risk of heart problems, type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure is excessive. You are 24 stone 8 at your latest yeah. weigh-in, which gives you a BMI of 54.6. If I show you that on a BMI chart, you come out about there, which you can see yeah. is significantly into the red. Not just obese, that's morbidly obese. Yeah. What is your obsession with cheese? Um, I just tend to have it in most of the things I eat. It's the one thing that jumps yeah. out of your food diaries. Um, you know, it's very calorie-dense. A lot of calories packed yeah. into a, a fairly small volume. That's kind of good news, in a way, because yeah. it means you can cut out quite a lot of calories yeah. by cutting down a bit, you know, because you're not going to notice it so much. Yeah. We've calculated Brooks consuming a colossal 3,900 calories a day nearly double the recommended intake for women. Cheese-free Marie, on the other hand, is having half the amount of calories needed, only munching a measly 1,000 a day. Poles apart, it's time super size and super skinny swap diets. First meal of the swap, breakfast. And Brooke's fruit pot plus calorie-laden cheese and mayo sandwich versus Marie's, nothing. Would not eating breakfast be a normal thing for you? I would always endeavour to have breakfast, but sometimes if I'm running a bit late, I'll just rush off and leave it. So, what do you think of the fruit salad? I'm a bit of um, a snob, I suppose, <laughs> thinking I would have fresh fruit. Yeah. <laughs> not meeting Marie's high standards, will the mayonnaise-covered fat cheese sandwich fare any better? I mean, would you always go for white bread? Because I tend to avoid white bread like the plague. Okay. If, if someone had made it from scratch, it would be different, but you just know that when they're processed like this, there's just so many chemicals and things in, so I would yeah. tend not to. Stay away from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had about as much as I really would want for now, thank you. Do you want to try and have a bit more? I think I'll stop there, thank you. Okay. Marie doesn't even manage half of Brooke's big breakfast butty, but swapping with the champion cheese chomper means more for lunch. More white bread, ooh, and cheese again. We had cheese earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a Titanic 10-inch cheese and ham baguette versus half a banana with buckwheat flake porridge and rice milk, which of course comes with Marie's superfood guide to gruel. Rice milk is quite sweet, so in actual fact there's no artificial sweetener in it, so right. um, I suppose in terms of calories that's quite good. Mm. And obviously it is mm. tasty as well. Brooke had some buckwheat flake porridge cooked with rice milk, which I think she quite enjoyed. It kind of felt like I was eating baby food. I wouldn't want to be eating that more than once, ever. <laughs> How are you finding um, the lunch? I wouldn't choose to have cheese follow on so early from mm. another cheese meal. And I wouldn't go for white bread again. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go for white bread full stop. I've pretty much had enough, really. It's just kind of shown me, like, seeing you eating what I would usually eat, how big it actually is. It's just massive. 
On a balanced diet, cheese, particularly Parmesan, is a good source of calcium. But Brooke's eating way more cheese than she should be. And Dr. Christian's decided to show Brooke what her unhealthy obsession could be doing to her. Cheese. You eat quite a lot of it. In fact, 1.72 kilos of cheese a month. That's the equivalent of about nine supermarket blocks of cheese a month, right. which is really quite impressive. Yeah. And I thought I would deconstruct cheese for okay. you. So our first main ingredient is full-fat milk. In fact, 20 litres of full-fat milk go into your monthly cheese intake. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Surprisingly amount. And just to add to the fat content, we have got four litres of full-fat cream. Full-fat milk and cream is high in saturated fat, and Brooke's getting bucket loads. You hadn't really thought about cheese in this way before, had you? No. <laughs> Next thing is we add two cupfuls of live, unpasteurised buttermilk. The average woman should eat no more than 20 grams of saturated fat a day, but Brooke consumes two and a half times that, with a third coming just from cheese. In a year, total saturated fat that you're eating just from cheese, I've represented here. Oh, that's horrible. In 21 blocks of lard. That's vile. If Brooke's cheese chomping didn't give her nightmares before, it may do after this. That's not all. Into this cheese, we add some stuff called Rennet. Rennet comes from the fourth stomach of plant-eating animals such as cows, goats and sheep. It congeals the milk, forming curds and whey, essential to cheese making. The other thing is we add 10 teaspoons ten. of salt. That's 40 grams of salt goes in there. That's incredible. Too much salt causes high blood pressure and with Brooke eating too much cheese, she's consuming double the salt she should be teamed with her saturated fat overload, medical student Brooks heading for heart failure. That's a healthy heart. Yeah. You've got great big vessel running down there. Yeah. That's the thing that tends to get blocked up when people have heart attacks, OK? Yeah. Which is what's happened here. And you can see very obviously the dark patch of dead tissue that will never recover, it will never repair. Yeah. The main culprit for all of this tends to be cholesterol, and that is put up by the saturated fat. So yeah. if you do start to get raised cholesterol, it's almost certainly yeah. due to this, and therefore you know what to do about it. It was bad seeing how much saturated fat I'm taking in, and it's just disgusting to think about. Tonight in the feeding clinic, cheeseaholic Brooke Gamble versus whole food advocate Marie Chirat. Poles apart, Dr. Christians asked the extreme eaters to swap diets to shock them into realising how bad their food habits are. It's day two. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, yes, all right. How are you? Good. I'm all right, thank you. For breakfast, it's Marie's half a banana and homemade muesli versus Brooke's two slices of thick buttered white toast with beef extract. I'm a bit dismayed by yet more white bread. I really don't like the sound of the beef extract and I, d I don't like the look of this at all, really. I quite like it, so obviously I would have it quite a lot. Um, but I suppose we should just try and have a go. What do you think? I'm not mad keen. No? <laughs> I'm yearning some fruit, some fresh fruit, yeah. or something wholesome. I'm finding this quite hard to stomach. But Brooke ploughs through. I don't like this. You've not eaten half of it. Mm. <laughs> mm. It just doesn't seem to make sense to me to eat something that you know is not really healthy, that you don't like. I think if I was in your position, I'd think I would try a little harder. So far, despite signing up for the swap, Superfood supporter Marie's refused to finish any of Brooke's food. Will she polish off lunch? She's swapping her quinoa, half an avocado, cress and yoghurt for Brooke's cucumber and, you guessed it, chunky cheese sandwich. A bit dismayed by cheese, but nevertheless it's, it's redeemed slightly by uh, being wholemeal bread. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's cucumber in there, there somewhere, is, yeah. so that sounds good too. A positive start, but as usual, Marie finds a problem. 
but it's too much in one sitting here. You don't yeah. need that much. Seems not even the brown bread and cucumber can convince Marie to clear her plate. I really wouldn't want any more. But Brooks had enough of her opponent's lack of effort. Obviously, this is a swap, and you're under-eating, but I'm sticking with your portion, not having more. So maybe you should stick with my portion. I don't think it's the name of the game, so I don't think it would be make sense to eat much more of that. It's diet swap stalemate. Post lunch, Marie and Brooke take a trip down memory lane. Will photos help pinpoint where their problems with food began? This one um, is obviously me as a young baby, yeah. um, but weight-wise, completely normal. Completely yeah. normal. And the next one, um, I'm at school, about six, I would imagine. I'll have words with my mother about that <laughs> haircut, but. Normal size, I would yeah, say. Yeah, again, normal. Whereas um, with this one, I'm looking much thinner. It was the years between childhood and adulthood that kicked off Marie's malnutrition. Some of my feelings about food, I think, arose when I had a few difficulties at school and I started reading about fasting and I was intrigued and very interested in this phenomena. So intrigued, Marie starved herself of food and drink every Tuesday for a whole year. And it had a devastating effect on her weight. At 16 years old, she was just six and a half stone. I did eventually stop, but I think thereafter I did think much more about what I was eating. How old were you there? I would say I was about 20. Right. It's a little bit beyond the time when I was fasting. Yeah, you look quite thin, don't you? I mean, you can see the, like, tops of your ribs and things. I don't think I felt that at the time, but certainly I do think it now. Yeah. Just like Marie, Brooke started life a normal weight. That's adorable, <laughs> isn't it? You look so cute. But it wasn't long before her weight problems began. I think I was about four there. Already you can start to see that my legs are quite chubby. Yeah. And then this one here, this is uh, when I was in Australia, in Sydney. But again here, you can see my arms are quite big. This skirt here was a size 22, I remember. Mm. And this is when I'm 14. Right. So with my case, it's just that I ate too much as a child, and I still am now. And you're still really yeah. young now, so if you sort of nip it in the bun yeah, now, that'll, that'll be sorted, won't it? Looking back has helped both Brooke and Marie look forward. But when you live with an eating disorder, looking forward to a healthy future can feel unfeasible. And over the past seven weeks, six sufferers have shared their very personal experiences, from anorexia... There are times when I look in the mirror and all I see is flab and rolls... ..to bulimia. I would tend to not eat for days on end, two or three days, and then I would purge whatever I ate. ..to when an eating disorder almost takes your life. My liver failed. You know, my heart has failed and I had to have dialysis because my kidneys failed. But tonight, we learn what it's like to move on. Recovering from an eating disorder can be a lengthy process. The average length in treatment of one form or another is about six years. 36-year-old Emma Paul knows just how difficult it is to recover from an eating disorder. Anorexia took over her life for three years. It's not as though we kind of click our fingers and go, oh, let's have anorexia, I'm going to stop today, or click fingers and it's suddenly gone. It's not like that. It took me a long time to accept that I had a problem and I needed to get help. Last series, Emma enrolled on a course designed to snap her out of her dangerous eating habits. Getting help has been key to Emma's and others' recovery. 18-year-old anorexic Ellie has been regularly seeing a doctor at her local eating disorder clinic. I'm on a strict regime in which I need to gain 700 grams a week, so I'm just hoping that I'll be able to find the willpower and find the strength to follow that eating plan and achieve that goal. I want to be able to fit into a size 8 pair of jeans and feel good about myself and just be happy, really. And Emma's proved happiness is possible in time. 
Three years ago, she weighed a frail five stone. Now she's a healthy eight stone. I'm definitely less obsessive about the foods. I'm far more relaxed now about the calories and fat content than I was before. Trying to overcome her fear of food with cognitive behavioural therapy is compulsive calorie counter and exercise addict, Laura. The overall plan to get better from this point is just to try and maybe increase my calories per day. Just try and accept food for what it is. It's just fuel for your body. It's nothing sinister or it's not trying to poison you. Realising food isn't the enemy has also been key to 20-year-old Lucy's recovery, who has bulimia with anorexic cognitions. Right now, I'm doing extremely well with the therapy. I've maintained a healthy weight now for quite a while. I think the steps to my recovery is basically me. Like, if I don't want to recover, I'm not going to. I mean, I've got to, you know, fight it for me and only me. Recovery takes a long time and doggy persistence, but it can eventually happen. Just look at Emma. Now I feel a lot more chilled and can have a laugh again, enjoy life again. <laughs> Since filming, Laura and Jonathan are still trying to recover from their eating disorders. Rosemary continues to work at an eating disorder clinic, helping sufferers on their road to recovery. Lucy's taking control of her binge purge behaviour, making real progress. She's less strict with calorie counting and has started socialising. And Ellie, who was just five stone ten pounds when we met her, has put on two stone five pounds and is finally filling those size eight jeans. If you think that you or someone you know has an eating disorder, go to channel4.com slash supersize. Cheers! <laughs> the last evening in the feeding clinic. So far, supersized Brooks braved every bite of Marie's minuscule whole food diet, despite not being to her taste. However, health food fanatic Marie's not returned the gesture. And Dr. Christian's concerned, Marie's failing to see the flaws in her food habits. Marie thinks she's eating a super healthy diet, but actually she's not getting it quite right. And coupled with her previous eating problems, I'm worried that this will derail her weight gain attempts once she gets home. So I'm just going to have a quick chat with her before she leaves. What have your kind of horrors been so far? Loads of white bread and cheese following on from cheese. Not your usual no. choice? No. What about quantity-wise? Are you finding that you are actually eating more than you normally would? Not yet, really. Not, yet. not that much more. You have still got some real deficiencies going on in your diet. Actually, there are gaps that really need to be filled. Mm. And certain foods, even things like cheese, for instance, ironically, you know, could actually benefit you quite a lot. Absolutely. Yes. Particularly the dairy and the calcium and what that would do for you. Mm. All Thank right. You. Thank you very much. Pep talk done, it's the final meal. A humongous lamb and chicken dinner with Yorkshire puddings, roast potatoes and mound of veg versus green lentil casserole, broccoli, and piece of pepper. Apologies for the quantity, because that looks very mean next to this. <laughs> to be fair, I thought that one looked massive, so... <laughs> oh, Brooke, it's great to have some broccoli. <laughs> this is definitely the best meal so far. I'm getting close to having had enough, I think. Really? Mm. It's quite a lot left. <laughs> there is a lot left, but I have eaten a lot. Yeah. But I will certainly try to have some more, because it is rather good. I think I'm nearly done. I've seen you trying to put more and more in your mouth, so I, I think you've had a quite good go at trying to get through it. But dinner isn't done. There's dessert. Organic rice milk rice pudding versus toffee and pecan roulade topped with cream. It's obviously the last part <laughs> of the feeding clinic, so how are you finding that? Do you think you'll be able to finish it? I should try. Just give it a minute. <clears throat> <laughs> got a tiny bit more to go, you can't leave it now. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> Thank you. I do feel quite full now. I bet you do. <laughs>
and Marie finally finishing one meal marks the end of one difficult diet swap. But before they go, Dr Christian wants one last word. OK, Marie, Brooke, I have the all-important part of your diet swap here, which is your diet plans, which you're going to go home and action yourselves. Looking forward to it. Yeah, raring to go. Marie, that one's yours. There you are. Brooke, that's yours. I'm going to see you in several weeks' time, see how you're getting on, see if there have been any changes, which I hope there have been. All right, so the best of luck to both of you. I'll leave you to Thank you. Brooke will be on 2,000 calories a day, with fruit and veg increasing and cheese decreasing. Brooke needs to stick to three regular meals and one healthy fromage-free snack a day. And Marie will be on 2,300 calories a day. She needs to eat more carbohydrates, protein and calcium-rich foods. And to add those vital pounds, have bigger portion sizes and snack regularly. I do feel I'm leaving the clinic with some valuable tools to help me make positive changes. I'm absolutely motivated and I'm really grateful for the experience. I'm looking forward to leaving because I just want to get started with it and start losing the weight and just kick start the rest of my life, really. I'll see you in a few weeks. Yes, all, right. all the best. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye. Coming up. Brooke and Marie are reunited for their weigh-in, and Dr Christian reveals the results. I think you know what I'm going to say now. It's been nine weeks since cheese-loving Brooke Gamble and superfood disciple Marie Sherat left the feeding clinic. It's time to find out if they've stuck to their healthy eating plans. I'm a little bit nervous because obviously if I haven't lost that much weight then I'll be a bit disappointed, but I've tried really hard, so hopefully it'll be OK. How's it all been going? Um, it's not as hard as I thought it would be, um, and I can't actually remember the last time I had cheese. So, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. I put you off cheese completely, did I? Yeah, definitely. Do you miss it? Not really. And. Sort of looking back on your old portion sizes and habits, what do you think of them now? Um, well, compared with what I have now, the portion sizes I used to have were huge. Um, they were definitely more than I actually needed. You've been back at uni and running around wards and things. Yeah. Any, have you noticed that is getting a little bit better? Obviously, we, I stand up quite a lot of the day, um, and that's definitely easier. I don't, my, ease, my knees don't ache and things like that. Okay, so, so little improvements already. Yeah. That's fantastic. I have found the last few weeks a, a, quite a challenge, really. Um, I'm a bit concerned that I may not have put on very much weight. You used to have very rigid, fixed beliefs on what you should be doing and what was healthy. I tried to sort of persuade you that they weren't always totally right or in your best interest. Do you think you've relaxed a bit on those? I still incline towards the sort of the healthier things and avoiding certain things, but I realise, you know, it's good and it's fun and all the rest of it to have some of the you know, less healthy things. Your portion sizes were incredibly small as well. Yes, I think they are bigger. Yeah, and how are you coping with that? Uh, I have found that difficult. I have found that hard. Um, feeling really full a lot of the time. I think the problem, the reason why you're generally feeling so stuffed is you haven't significantly changed the types of foods that you're eating. You're probably sticking to the same very high fibre but quite low calorie food. There's only so much high fibre food that you or I could stomach. By increasing it, you're just going to be left more full, but you're not really getting the increase in calories. So you do need to actually choose more calorie-dense foods that will give you the energy, but won't fill you up. That's really what this has all been about. But we'll see what happens. But before the results, the ladies are reunited. Hiya. Hi. How are you? Oh, it's kind of to see. Oh. How are you? Sort of up and down a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how successful I've been, but you're looking amazing. Thank you. Come and join me over here. That's it. It's time to put you out of your miseries. Okay. Really? I'll tell you what you want to know. Marie, what about you? I think you know what I'm going to say now. A few pounds? Exactly the same as you were. Oh, really? Neither gained nor lost. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry to say, because I am sorry. I'd, I would have loved to see you yeah. put on a bit of weight. And I think the problem with that is you just have underestimated the number of changes that you needed to make. 
You've got to get shoveling more in, right. is the bottom line on this. Yeah. I mean, I'm disappointed, and I can see that you're disappointed, but look on this as kind of, OK, I've learned, I've tried, it hasn't always worked, so now move onwards and upwards, sweeping changes. Right, and you? Okay. Well, you have lost two stone Yay. five pounds Yay. of weight loss. Wow. Spectacularly fantastic. Yeah, good. <laughs> Not only that, Three inches have now disappeared from around your tummy. Okay. An inch and a half around your thigh, so okay. you should be really happy. I'm delighted. Are you happy for her? Oh, yes. I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely Did you think thrilled. she'd do it, or do you I, think... I did, oh. actually. I, I did think she would seem very determined. I am disappointed that I haven't put the weight on, but I really am determined now to go home and make the changes that I have to. When Dr Christian told me that I'd lost two stone five pounds, I was like, wow, that is actually quite a lot. I thought I'd lost some, but nowhere near that amount. Really proud of myself. If you're over or underweight and you'd like to appear in the next series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, log on to channel4.com slash take part for an application form. Coming up next time, we catch up with three of last year's diet swappers to see if they've ditched the deadly eating habits for good. That's your lunch. I don't think I can go another couple of hours without any food. My relationship to food has changed. My attitude to eating has changed. Before I was eating because I had to, but now I'm eating because I want to and I'm enjoying food. Looking for love can be a daunting prospect. Sam asks his ideal girl out in The Undateables next on 4. Now, a quick reminder, if you missed last night's episode of Embarrassing Bodies, you can catch up at any time through 4OD.